Blade Runner 2049 is undoubtedly my favorite movie of 2017. The set design is intricate and the atmosphere around it is immaculate. There's a stark contrast within everything in the world of Blade Runner 2049. The old and the new. The dystopia and the neon. The real and the artificial. In such a frenzy world, how can anyone decipher the truth? You have the replicants and the humans. They're the real memories and the implanted ones. Did Joy really love Kay, or was she just fulfilling her function? Would you read to me? It'll make you feel better. You hate that book. I don't want to read either. Let's dance. The incredibly stunning cinematography of Roger Deakins doesn't help either. Because what we see can be a distraction. What is real, and what is not? My definition of real within this film refers to how human a character is. The measure of that is the representation of free will that character has. For example, the replicants operate as engineered slaves, and Kay has to sink to a baseline. Why don't you say that three times, within cells interlinked? Within cells interlinked, within cells interlinked, within cells interlinked. We're done. The hologram Joy is programmed to cater to a user's desire. You look lonely. I can fix that. The visuals might just be our first clue. Human environments are messy and uneven. There's a sort of controlled chaos. In comparison, the perfectly structured locations emit a distant and artificial look. And if we listen closely, the audio is our second clue. The more human a character is, the fuller their voice is. Their voice has a more rounded tone and quality to it. A real boy needs a real name. You are real for me. Sometimes to love someone, you gotta be a stranger. An inhuman character, however, has a hollow and echo quality to their voice. Fire again. Fire again. Fire. Oh, come on. Get up. Find the child. Neander Wallace, a human character that is all about control, has the most hollowed voice in the film. A child can count to nine on fingers. We should own the stars. Yes, sir. Joy, on the other hand, who is just a hologram, has a fuller volume throughout most of the film. I always knew you were special. This technique is even more brilliant with the segregation of in and outdoors. The sound design creates a sense of space and distance. We can associate the audio with the visuals, and in turn, the characters. A character with hollow voice gives off a distant vibe and emotion. Even if a viewer is unaware of this, the audience feels a sort of invisible barrier towards a character. I had the lock. I found the key. Yet the pins do not align. The door remains locked. Joy and Kay, in comparison, feel very real and human despite being man-made. In the film, Kay is unsure if he is a replicant or a born child. He meets Anna, who supposedly shares the same identity mystery. And the audio throws us off a loop. Someone lived this, yes. This happened. I know it's real. Anna sounds extremely artificial, and Kay, who is slowly tracing his tracks, feels more and more human. This is the most genius part of the sound design. The audiences who are unaware, but have already registered and associated the sound, falls in the same trap as Kay. We are entirely sure Kay is the replicant-born child. Until the very end. You imagined it was you. Oh, you did. The distinction of humans, replicants, or hologram holds very little meaning in the end. What truly matters is the power of choice and freedom. K may not be special, but he made a choice to be something greater than himself. And for me, that is the greatest miracle.
Ay, yeah, yeah. I'm